Howdy everybody, this is Steve KM9G. That's how I did it. Last time I went like this and I meant to go like this. This is Steve KM9G. I feel like I haven't done this a hundred times, I don't know. Cut, start over. Howdy everybody, this is Steve KM9G. See, I can do it, I can do it. All right, so QDX build vlog. This is the last one in the build vlog series. Then we're gonna get into the using series where we get to use the fully powered up, turned on, radio as opposed to a box full of parts. We're gonna do the connectors. There is a power capacitor mod. Hands is fantastic for admitting to, fixing, covering, repairing, upgrading, updating from any mistakes that he might have made. Build, building and designing these kits is not easy in the first place. Um, so that like this isn't any shame on hands or anything. This is like kudos, this is amazing. This is why I will continue to buy kits from hands because I know that that support is out there. It's on Hans's website, it shows up in the manual, it shows up as uh, updated parts in the instructions, and um, it's just, it's there, it's all transparent, it's fantastic. So a couple of the things that we have a fix for in here is there is a power capacitor that needs to be connected between the positive input and ground in order to prevent some kind of problem that's described in the manual. I'll take his word for it, he's smarter than I am. And then they found that some of the inductors were uh, resonant on frequency or causing harmonic issues or something. And he gave a set of four inductors and the instructions on how to fix them. I ain't gonna lie, it's a pain in the butt, but I'd rather have a working radio than to not know about it. So bear with me while we get through that process and I hope there's some keen insights for you if you have a version one of this kit. Um, I'm not sure if it was fixed in version 2, and I know version 3 isn't even out yet at the time of recording this. So it could be fixed by the time you get there. Either way, it's a good uh, lesson in how to, you know, bodge in solutions and, and fix problems. And then we're going to do the first power up. All I'm going to do is turn it on and make sure I don't let the smoke out. I could. I know there's more videos in the series, but... Uh, we're, d we're done with the uh, the build, we might move on to repair, you never know. So let's get over to the workbench and get this thing done. Install the connectors, I hope I don't get these ones backwards or messed up or anything. So we'll do that USB connector first since it's there. And these big holes are for big ape fingers. So you actually wind up putting a little bit of extra solder in there as a physical anchor point so that when you put your USB cable connection in, you're not yanking it off the board every time. You're not causing stress. You guys remember your physics, physics classes, right? Okay, now that we got one set up, let's get that tape out of there and check our work because now we can make some adjustments by reflowing the solder. All right, I like the way that looks. Then we pick another one and solder that one in. All right, didn't melt it that time. Almost complete. Now we need a power supply capacitor, which is what this extra capacitor was way back in the beginning. And what we need to do is take the striped side and connect it to the USB connector and the non-striped side and connect it to the DC power connector. So that's going to be fun to get in there. Soldered on the top side of the PCB. Yay. My trick is going to be I'm going to get a little bit of solder on here so it's already halfway started. Okay, new trick. Hold that down like that. And then we can get it in there and still have room to put our soldering iron in. And then we can bend it into the position that we want when we're done. That is connected. Now I'm going to very gently 
move it away from that toroid. Type 2 fun. And now the fun part. Replace the 47 microhenry inductors. So these were inductors like I thought they were. Oh, yuck. Oh, this is going to be fun. I'm just going to have to do these one at a time. And these are all yellow stripe up. And to me, it looks like it's got two yellow stripes on it. So, on his picture, it's yellow and white. And to my eyes, it's yellow and gold. Which is fine, because the next two bands are purple. So we'll do purple up. Aha, uh -huh. crud. Okay, I was supposed to remove some parts first. So to remove L1, let's get a different color Sharpie. Let's go with silver. So you need to remove L1 and L9 and L7 and L5. So those are the four to remove. Now, the trick with these is we don't care, they're trash, so I'm going to try and just cut them off. Okay, that worked for that one. Hope it was the right one. It was. And then this one here. So I actually first broke the package and then I went back and double checked my work. Now we get back to other pain. All right, and this goes to R9, which we already identified. And then the other part of it, bottom of C2, top of C2, connector, connector. It goes right underneath of that one. So I'm going to push this out of the way, which shows that that solder joint didn't hold. Okay, that's good. This goes on top of R9. The way he's got this thing magnified on his picture, there's so much room compared to what I've got to work with here. All right, we're gonna do this the hard way, the dangerous way, I don't know. Oh, crud. I knew that was gonna happen. I did it upside down. Does it matter? I don't know that it matters. I did a little bit of quick research versus trying to desolder this mess and start over again, because it's already messy enough and the answer that I got was they don't have a polarity unless it matters to you for reasons that seem like they are way outside the scope of this project. So I'm going to continue down this path and I can always fix it later on. R8 and R8 is there. That's going to be hard to see. R8 is right there. And then... One, two, three, four, down. One, two, three, four. That looks about right. Yellow and purple at the top, so I don't make that same mistake twice. Bend that one down a lot to get it bent into place. Nope, wrong direction. Bend it up a lot to get it into place. Getting creative. All right, top side's done. Let's double check. We got the color oriented properly. Yellow, purple up. And then four slots down. One, two, three, four. This one? No, the one right below it. One, two, three, four, number four. That one right there. And then last one is R7, yellow, purple, up, right there. Do one, two, three, four down. And it looks like there's a solder ridge in the picture. One, two, three, four down, that one right there. And then one, two, three, four down. So it's the one in the middle right there.
Ooh, that was uh, fun. If it's ugly and it works, then it ain't ugly. We'll find out if it works in a minute, I guess. All right, I think we are ready to go on the next steps. Oh man, I hope we're ready to go on the next steps. All right. Very nice. Now this should slide in and no circuit parts should touch the, uh, the case. Maybe we'll try the other side. Yep, needed to do the other side. All right, so if we look down under there, uh, I don't see anything touching anything that shouldn't be touching anything. And now we need to unscrew this. That's what happens when you get ahead of yourself, I guess. All right, that LED should line up nice. Might need a little bit of persuasion. All right, that looks pretty good too. And then we can slide, <laughs> it's dirty. Then we can slide this cover on, on top of it. And there you've got your nice little QDX transceiver. These are four screws and the feet. Like I said, I'm not gonna use the feet in the plastic bag. And now we need to get into this thing here, which is the Soul Bay UC24U DC to DC converter. And it comes with a whole bunch of plugs. Are we happy? Uh, I'm happy. We'll see how we go after this. And then what I want to do is get rid of this cover. And I would assume that this is the input side and this is the output side. Get more surprise. Maybe it would be nice if there was a way to tell which side got plugged in. All right, so I have 12 volts here from my ham power supply. That should go in there like that. And it says 12 volts, and I want to set it to 9 volts. And if we unplug it and plug it back in, it should remain at 9 volts, which it does. Excellent. Now I want to see if this fits in there. It does. That's interesting. They include an adapter from itself to itself. All right. So next thing I want to do is verify that it is actually putting out the proper voltage. Put that in the Two scale, we'll set that to volts DC. And then we can stick that in there. Minus one. Minus nine. So we put center positive, and that gives us Nine volts. Nine volts exactly. Oh, nope, 9.01. I moved a little bit, but you get the picture. All right, so center positive. Now we need to verify in the QDX manual that it is center positive. Use a regulated, well smoothed DC supply of not more than 12 volts. It should be capable of up to one amp current supply, all the way back up to the top of the document. Okay, well, there's more than one way to skin this cat. Let's get that out of the way. Get that out of the way. 
let's open this case up and put this onto continuity mode so it'll beep like so and then we need to find a ground pin like so Okay, so it is in fact center positive. Excellent. So now we need to take this. Are you ready? We're set to nine volts still. Let's plug it in for the first time. We've got a blinking, rapidly blinking red light. And now it's solid. Excellent. Man, those inductors were a pain in the butt. But I'm proud that I got it done. I have an accomplishment to share and show off and, and brag about. And you guys get to all see it. And it did come on. It did blink. It's supposed to blink for five seconds when it first comes on. Then it goes solid. So everything's working. It didn't smell funny. So next up, we're going to do a firmware upgrade because this has the 101 version of the firmware. And there's a 103 version out already. Hans has been pretty good about releasing firmwares. The firmware upgrade process... It's fantastic. It's just, it's super fantastic. There's a couple of different ways to do it, but like the way that it's set up to do in the beginning, A plus, A plus, fantastic work on that. Um, and then we're gonna get uh, WSJTX configured and make some contacts, and then we're gonna do some power output tests, and we're gonna get JS8 call installed and do some work on that. So be sure to subscribe. Otherwise, there is a video right over here that I think you will enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome. This has been a blast to build.